What's up everybody, this is Dr. Ali Hader. Today is April 20th, 2020. And what I wanna talk about today regarding COVID is sort of the non-COVID related medical problems and sequelae that has occurred as a result of this pandemic. So we all sort of either have seen firsthand if we're in the healthcare field, we've heard from colleagues and friends or on social media or on the news about how COVID-19 in many places is sort of overwhelming these hospitals and the COVID patients are taking over the majority of the inpatient care in a lot of facilities. Now, one thing that we're not seeing a lot of is sort of everything else, especially heart disease. So cardiovascular problems often take up a large chunk of the admissions and inpatient volume of a lot of hospitals and healthcare systems. You know, cardiovascular disease remains the number one killer in men and women throughout the world. And you would think during a pandemic, heart disease is not sort of going to stop. But what we've been seeing is a significant drop in the number of heart attack admissions and other cardiology related admissions sort of all around the United States and even the world. Now, even in my institution, we've noticed a significant drop in the number of acute heart attacks that have been coming in or STEMIs, we call them, which is an ST elevation myocardial infarction. This is the most serious type of heart attack when your artery is completely blocked and it warrants you to be rushed to the cardiac catheterization laboratory to try and get that artery open. And generally at our center, we're on a given week around this time of year, we're expecting to see anywhere between five and even up to 10 cases in a week, but we've sort of seen a little bit of a dip in that volume. Now talking to colleagues across the United States from New York to Michigan, everyone's sort of noticing a similar trend. Now there was a recent paper that just came out in Jack that looked at data from nine centers and they looked at the volume of these uh, acute heart attacks coming in before the pandemic and after the pandemic. Now granted, there's only about a, a month and a half of data, but they found about a 38% reduction in the number of these sort of acute heart attacks coming in to these centers. Similarly, Spain did a similar study where they looked at their activations of these acute heart attacks and they found a 40% drop in that. There's some data out of England showing a 50% reduction in the number of people presenting to the emergency room with heart attack-like symptoms. So there's no question there's a trend of a reduction in the number of these cases. Now, the question is, why exactly is this happening? Now, this topic has been hotly discussed recently, particularly among cardiologists, and this is occurring on social media, the people publishing opinion pieces, there's other um, video content out there about it, and really we're all kind of noticing this trend. And the question is exactly why is this going on? Why are we seeing less heart attacks during this pandemic? Now there's several possible reasons this could be happening. I think the general consensus is there's three main reasons why we're seeing this reduction in the number of heart attacks, as well as other cardiovascular emergencies, congestive heart failure, even the number of strokes has come down. So what's going on here? Well, let's take a look. Now, the first main reason that we all think is sort of going on is simply that people are very concerned and too scared to come to the emergency room, right? Because of this COVID-19 pandemic, everybody's socially distancing, we're all wearing masks everywhere, we're stressed out to even go to the grocery store, so the last place a lot of people wanna go is the emergency room because they're picturing this area filled with virus and they don't wanna expose themselves. And it's a valid, valid fear, right? So what's gonna happen in those situations is someone may be having a heart attack symptom at home, whether it's chest pain or severe shortness of breath, um, maybe they passed out, and they are gonna to try to ride this out at home, okay? Now, the problem with that is if you're actually having a severe heart attack and you try to ride it out at home, you A, may not survive, or B, you may be riding this heart attack out at home until the point where you get so sick and there's been a lot of heart muscle damage that by the time you decide to come to the hospital, you may not survive, you may have serious long-term complications because a lot of your heart muscle has already sort of died. So staying home if you think you're having a heart attack is not really a great idea. Now, to kind of support some of these theories, let's look at some of the numbers. Now, in New York, they've reported a 400% increase in the number of cardiac arrests that are occurring. And sure, a huge chunk of this is likely related to COVID-19, but I guarantee you a large portion of this is people who opted not to seek medical attention when they had a serious problem going on. Now, I've heard from several colleagues scenarios that sort of support this. We've had some cases of patients who came to the hospital about a day or two after they started having chest pain and they ended up having a severe complication, something called a mechanical rupture where 
a whole ruptures in the walls of the heart and patients have a very high mortality from that. And there have been cases of people like that who didn't survive. I've also heard of cases of people who had patients who stayed at home because they were having chest pain, but they ignored it, they didn't want to come in, and they ended up dying at home. So this is actually happening out there and we have stories and we have data to support it. A second reason that could be going on is because of this social distancing, we are just seeing less heart attacks occur because there's a reduction in the stressors that generally precipitate it. Number one, people are not seeing family as much. They're not going to their jobs. And these are two major sources of stress, especially in the United States. And we know that stress is a risk factor. Okay, people are exerting themselves less. Not only are they not going to the gym or exercising, they're not going to their jobs that may require physical activity. So potentially less heavy exertion is playing a role here. Additionally, people are not going out to eat. They're not going to the restaurants, they're not getting fast food, they're not going to get those unhealthy foods, high salt, pro-inflammatory things that taste oh so good, but are potentially very bad for you. So that's probably also reducing some of the admissions for, again, heart attacks and congestive heart failure and strokes due to blood pressure spikes, etc. And third, there probably are people who are coming in with primary cardiac problems, except they're coming in with COVID-19. Now, people with COVID who are really sick, they can definitely get end organ involvement. They can get cardiac manifestations. We can see markers of cardiac injury that we normally would attribute to a primary heart problem, but we're sort of blaming it all on the COVID and focusing on that. So there may in fact be people coming in with these sort of true primary cardiac issues that are being lumped together uh, in their COVID diagnosis. Now, this is super important to recognize because these people who are potentially not coming in when they're having a real problem are people who could actually be treated and saved, right? COVID-19, when you get really sick, you're right, our treatments are not that great right now and a lot of these people who get ventilated will pass away. But if you're having a heart attack or a stroke and you get into the hospital early, we can save you, okay? So if you're not gonna come seek medical attention when that's happening, you're just gonna become a collateral damage statistic of COVID-19 even though you never had the disease, okay? So that's what we want to avoid. Recently, the ACC has also released a statement and trying to get a message directly to the patients that if you are having chest pain symptoms, severe shortness of breath, or stroke-like symptoms, call 911, you will get taken care of, okay? The emergency rooms are being super cautious and we will protect you while we try to treat your underlying problem. There's also a lot of campaigns on social media from physicians of all specialties, including cardiologists, to send the message out there that despite the social distancing that we are doing and need to do to try to spread the, decrease the spread of COVID-19, we still need to be able to take care of your other problems. So anyway, that's it for now, and hopefully we can get the message out there to people that you know don't let the fear of COVID-19 stand in the way of serious medical issues that are going on. Thanks.